Today's episode of The Bitcoin Show is brought to you by Mt. Gox, the place to buy and sell Bitcoins online. M-T-G-O-X, mtgox.com. And The Thank You Economy by best-selling author, New York Times best-selling author, Gary Vaynerchuk. Thankyoeconomybook.com. Check it out. Hey everybody, welcome to The Bitcoin Show. We've been on a little bit of a hiatus, but we're back and uh, really excited to bring you uh, a fantastic guest today. I'm so excited to introduce uh, Charlie Schrem, who's co-founder and CEO right, of BitInstant.com. If you haven't heard of BitInstant, you're going to now. So welcome, Charlie. Thanks, thanks for having me, Bruce. How's it going? I haven't seen you since the Bitcoin open. conference. Has, have we seen each other since then? The open video conference. We were both. Oh, at. the open video. Of course, of course, the open video. That was a great time. All these conferences. Yeah. The Korean yeah. barbecue we had. Yeah, after. that's right. Of course. How could I forget? Yeah, right in the, in the neighborhood. We're like right near Korean Town. Korean Town is like between away. us and the Empire State Building. Yeah. Right, all around here. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So tell us about Bit Instant. What's the deal with um, with it? First of all, what is Bit Instant? Bit Instant is is the premier way to get money into your exchanges. Right now we support uh, USD, planning on moving on to bigger currencies. Mm -hmm. We started with Trade Hill and depositing Liberty Reserve, Dwala, and Paxum into your Trade Hill accounts instantly. So if you have one of those currencies, you can deposit money. Um, we moved on, we added actually uh, Mt. Gox this morning as an exchange. Okay. And we're bring, up, bring up my screen, will you? And, we'll, and this is the actual site. Um, okay, so we can see the graphic and stuff. Okay, so keep on going. Tell us about it. Okay, so you can, you can use Liberty Reserve, Paxum, Dwala. We added um, Mt. Gox this morning, and mm -hmm. as a, another exchange you can deposit into the mm -hmm. reporting. Mm -hmm. We're adding on a couple of more exchanges as well. We plan to have the top, top five to six exchanges it's in order to retain the market share, uh -huh. and eventually move on to withdrawals. So you can instantly withdraw out of your, your exchange accounts, which is, I know is a, is a big problem now. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people want to get their money out faster and to provide more liquidity in the Bitcoin economy itself right. and eventually move on to instant um, Bitcoin transfers and instant transfers of USD across all of the exchanges. And then adding on a lot more um, ways of getting money in and ways of getting money out. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And so I, I understand, I mean, it sounds great, instant money in and out, but what does that mean exactly? Because like when you, when you are on these exchange sites, you know, basically they say it's instantaneous. I mean, you're wiring money though, usually through a bank wire. You have money in a Chase account. Mm -hmm. or if you have money in a Citibank account, you have to wire it over to, to an exchange. Mm -hmm. Wire transfers can take anywhere from two to three days and they cost $30, $40. Uh -huh. um, with, our, with our service, you can pull the money straight using one of the, one of the methods that we have. It's a lot cheaper and a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And once the money's in those, in those Liberty Reserve, Dwala, or Paxum, then you have to wait another, either as little as six hours, as most as three, four days, to get your money from there into the actual exchange account. With us, what we do is we hold large reserves in all the exchanges, and using some artificial intelligence and based on market conditions, we're able to hold reserves in all the exchanges and transfer your money to you once you pay us in whatever currency you want to. So you already have money in Mt. Gox or yes. Trade Hill, and so if I want to put $1,000 in, then I, I get $1,000 in, then you, you just you can credit me instantly and then get, get paid out. Sort of, okay, so, so what methods do I, if I want to put $1,000 in and I have it in my checking account, how do I get it to bid instant? Fastest way is to use one of those three methods, Dwala, um, Paxum, or Liberty, Liberty Reserve. Liberty Reserve, mm -hmm. it's a little more, um, work involved, but with Dwala or Paxum, you can actually pull the money out of your account, ACH, um, and then transfer directly over to us. Those sites have fees associated with it, but we'll, we cover all the fees when it comes to transferring the money from those places to us. Mm -hmm. It's all included in what our fee is. When you go to our website, you type in how much you want to send, it'll tell you in real time exactly how much you're going to be getting in the exchange, and at most it takes five minutes. Our average is 11 seconds from Dwala to us. And your money's account. Seconds. Eleven seconds. So um, when you pay us. Yeah, but uh, but wait a minute. So I don't understand. What? How can it? I mean, 
if, I, if I'm going to use Dwala to get the money to you, how is it faster than if I use Dwala to put the money directly into Mt. Gox or Trade Hill? Have you put money directly into Mt. Gox with Dwala? Yeah, yeah. It could take as little as, as an hour. It could take as long as 24 hours, even mm -hmm. longer if it's on a weekend because he has to manually approve them. Right. We right. have an automated system. Okay. The software does everything. It connects with all of the payment processors and all the exchanges. We integrated with everyone. And mm. because of our software is working with the API and with all the other exchanges, everything mm. is done automatically. So it's literally just within seconds or a few minutes at the most. It, the orders go into a, a queue system. If mm -hmm. We have you know, a multi-tiered verification system mm -hmm. because you know, mm -hmm. um, according to anti-money laundering and know your customer policies, mm -hmm. we have to um, mm -hmm. be very careful. We have limits, okay. amount you could put in, amount you could take out. Okay, so with Dwala you can use ACH, we mm -hmm. know that. Um, with Paxim and Liberty Reserve, you have, don't you have to use a bank wire to get money to use them? Use a basically? bank wire or you can buy Liberty Reserve currency with a multitude of, of other ways. You can use your credit see. card, you can use you know, wire transfers, mm -hmm. you can use really anything. Mm -hmm. Most, there are dozens of Liberty Reserve exchanges. Um, the big announcement mm -hmm. is actually we're partnering up with a, with a federally and state licensed um, money service business mm -hmm. to offer instant cash deposits. So essentially, you mm -hmm. go to any bank, any bank, Chase Bank of America, ING, Citibank, um, and a couple other smaller credit unions. You, you come to our site first, you make your, um, a transfer request, it'll generate a deposit slip for you automatically, you print that out, you go there, you give them the money. Mm -hmm. And unlike other exchanges that have tried that, one hour accounts will never be shut down because we're fully licensed. Um, we're already with the banks, everything's set up, and it's fully automated. So as soon as you put that money in the account, the banks let us know, mm -hmm. we pull it every 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and the money is instantly transferred into your account. Wow. So, okay. no more waiting. It's your money, why wait? Okay. And so, and how does it work in reverse? Is it, is it similar in reverse? A little more complicated. Not? Okay. During reverse. Um, what we're going to do with, with the exchanges is that once we're integrated with them, you pay us. So with, you can pay us with the Mt. Gox voucher or with Trade Hill, we're building a shopping cart interface with them. Mm -hmm. So you can actually kind of check out money and pay us into our account. Mm. And then once the money's in our account, which is done instantly at the same time, then you can choose how you want to get your money. If you want your money in Dwala, pack some Liberty Reserve, a wire transfer, dozens of different methods we'll be able to provide, and then you can mm. get your money out wow. instead of waiting for withdrawals. We have mm. limits, of course, but the limits are a little bit higher than what the exchanges offer. Mm. And the big problem with the economy today, um, the Bitcoin economy actually, is it takes a long time to get your money out of the exchanges. Mm -hmm. So people are a little nervous trusting mm -hmm. the exchanges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with us, we're willing to take that risk. Right. Front of your money instantly, just pay a small fee, mm -hmm. and uh, have a nice day. Yeah. And um, it's, it's no secret there that uh, there have been, there's been disputes between uh, Dwala and Trade Hill, mm -hmm. famously. So, but you acting in the middle, um, you acting in the middle is kind of, allows people to use Dwala again with Trade Hill. Yeah. Because Trade Hill doesn't accept Dwala They don't accept Dwala. Right? We built okay. our own... Okay. Mm -hmm. We built our own verification system mm -hmm. that checked for fraud with Dwala. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy okay. to say that since we started, we've had one customer for mm. actually defraud us. Wow. And so Dwala actually ate the losses and paid us back. Oh, wow. That's good. That's yeah. good. Cool. So, all right. Um, and what are the fees involved? What is, what is, I know, I mean, aside from the exchange mm, sites that have their own little fees, but what, what's the, what well, is... We take care of that too. We oh. were working with all the exchanges. So the mm -hmm. exchanges that charge fees, those are eaten. Mm -hmm. once, once you pay our fee, like I said on the site, you see how much you're giving in. It says right there how much you'll be getting out as soon as you... Oh, okay, so that includes whatever, if they have any fees in, exactly. involved. Including the Liberty Reserve fee, including the Dwala fee, including the Paxson fee. The we're working thing. with everyone. So mm -hmm. you, the money you put in, a lot of problems with now is you don't know how much you're getting. With, there's so many fees associated with getting money in and out. Right. We'll tell you exactly how much you're getting. So as an example, if I want to put in uh, $1,000 through Dwala into Mt. Gox, what would the typical charge be? So the fee for that is 1.9%, uh, 1.99% of, um, of a $500 transfer. You can't actually do 1000 per transfer. You have to do two $500 transfers. Oh, okay. Um, you do mm -hmm. a $500 transfer. Mm -hmm. So the fee at the end of the day will come out to around... Um, and the fees change, so between seven and nine dollars, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's after everything. It's after Dwala's fees, after Gox's fees, and, and after our fees, mm -hmm. and the money will be there instantly. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
so it really is instantaneous. And then, um, and like I said, withdrawing it, the fastest is probably Dwala. If you if you want real green cash. Yeah, the fastest right now would be. You mean without us or with us? With with you. Yeah, right now it would be Dwala if you want actually mm -hmm. green cash. Or then, Liberty Reserve, because Liberty Reserve, you're paying a little bit more on, once you have the money in Liberty Reserve, mm -hmm. to get the money out of Liberty Reserve, um, it, you can pay a little bit of a higher fee, but you can have a little faster than if you'd wait from Dwala. Because mm, okay. Dwala has to put the money back in your account, your which, bank account, which can take a day or two. It takes a couple of days. Okay, got you. All right. So um, I got your, your press release uh, here, and I'm going to go through the points. I'm going to ask sure. you about each of these. So obviously now that the big... One of the big news, I mean, they're all big news, but is that you're now working with Mt. Gox. Is that that's brand new? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when did that launch? Your f Yesterday morning or this morning, I oh, forget. Okay. Well, all right. Japan time, so. <laughs> I don't know every time zone. Yesterday morning, Japan time, whatever that is. Okay. I'm always, so, always working with, with the, the Asian. I say RSN. Yeah. Uh, real soon now. Yeah. No, it just happened. All right, cool. So anyway, it's done. So by the time you're seeing this, you can actually use it with yeah, Mt. Gox. Yeah, you could. And, um, I'm happy to say on this show that we're going to be integrating with a lot of the other exchanges. We're already set up with, with Crypto Exchange, yeah. with Intersango, mm -hmm. already, um, and a couple other smaller ones, uh, Verwox as well. Mm -hmm. Verwox is actually a very exciting one. No one really knows about it yet, but mm -hmm. Verwox has a lot of methods such as Money Pack, including and PayPal. Mm -hmm. Customers will be able to come to our site. Don't, they don't have to go to Verwox. They can come straight to us. We're integrated already with Verwox's system, so they can use any of Verwox approved methods, including PayPal, Money pack, money bookers, mm -hmm. and fund their exchange accounts. Cool. Yeah, I haven't even. How do you spell Verox? V I R W O X. Okay. It's a big Second Life currency site. Oh. So okay. a lot of the okay. virtual world type of stuff. There's so many new exchanges. So and those you're already set up with those that you mentioned. Yeah, it's fully They're integrated. Already it's just a funding issue right now. Okay. The way so. the system works is, um, any investors out there, give me a call. Mm. Yeah, because you have to have the cash, those cash reserves. Exactly, you have to have around. the cash okay. reserves. You need to have small operations yeah. budget and yeah. things like that in okay. order to keep the site running. Um, okay. We have th three servers, so it's, it's not simple. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. The uh, next thing is real up, real time updates. I don't understand. Yeah, you come to our site, mm -hmm. and instead of doing the transfer and worrying about what's next, you have an order number mm -hmm. and an orders page you can go back to. If you scroll down on the site, you can actually enter your order number in, and it'll show you in real time what's going on, where your money is at that moment. So if you make a Dwala transfer, like I said before, mm -hmm. it goes through a verification system. So as soon as the money's transferred, you'll see an update, you know, Dwala verification beginning, Dwala verification round one complete, step two verification completed, order mm -hmm. executed, funds sent to the exchange. And it's all done using JavaScript in real time. Uh -huh. So you can actually see where your money is. Wow. Okay. So it's like like tracking your FedEx package. You've got exactly. Look, it's your money. Yeah. It's not our money. It's your mm -hmm. money, and it's your exchange account. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want there to be any thoughts of where my money is or anything like that. Right. It's very safe and secure. Right. Okay. Is it can are people using this for uh, what do you call it arbitrage? Arbitrage. Yes. Is it is that a is that a popular use? I would say forty percent, fifty even fifty percent of our business is arbitrage. Really. A lot. We have some customers who are transferring seven to ten thousand dollars a day with us. Yeah, because if they, if you want to switch, obviously you want to you know make money on the spreads. They don't have the cash reserves like you guys do, so that's they can take advantage of that system to do that. Yeah, we actually had a cool idea, which we're, we're building now is is to kind of host arbitrage bots on mm -hmm. our system already, mm -hmm. because we already have all the exchanges integrated. So you kind of pay in to that pool, and mm -hmm. it runs on a cycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. okay. And then whatever you get paid out, whatever we make, you get pay out based on how much you put in. So uh, regular users can, can make money on arbitrage even though they have no idea what the word means. Are you saying that your site has like robots, arbitrage robots built in that a user can we use? We built them. We have, built we're them. not using them right now, but we built uh -huh. them, yeah. So is that, that's coming? That's it's a funding be... issue, again. Uh, we funding. have everything built and we have we everything ready to rock and roll, <laughs> but we're just doing it very slowly on a slow launch because mm -hmm. first of all, we need to make sure everything works and we, we have high reserves and there's, so there's some risk associated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Making sure everything works. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah, that's that going to be a lot of fun too. Yeah. Also, inter exchange transfers. So, if you say I have $100 in Trade Hill and I want to send it to, to Gox, or I have $100 in, in Intersango and I want to send it to Trade Hill, you don't have to go through Dwala or Liberty Reserve or any of these other places. Right. You bypass everything. Through Bit Instant. Boop, boop. Through Bit Instant, we'll move your money for a very low fee mm -hmm. straight to the other exchange. So, you make money arbitrage that way too. Okay. Are those fees the one? Are they uh, on here or this is right now? You can see the fees for um, Gox to Trade Hill, Trade Hill to Gox. Okay. Okay. It's very low. It's like pointy and Yeah. 
Okay, cool. All right, so let's see, going down the list, uh, I want to see what else. API support, so what, what is that going to be used for? Surprisingly, not well, surprisingly for, for most people, but a lot of people don't even come to our site to use, to use the software. Um, they use our API. So most people have arbitrage bots, mm. and most people have um, trading bots, tra trading software, as they do everything through command line. Mm -hmm. So you can actually download, um, not only can you download our API, which is free to use, and integrate that with your software, we actually have um, a Gox SH fork, which um, is basically our software on command line. So you can mm. download that and run our software in your terminal. Wow. So you boot it up, you say, I want to send money from here to here. It's all done instantly. And you don't have to come to the site. How long before the Android app, so that I can soon <laughs> iPhone app first, then Android in, out. Yeah, well, iPhone. But I don't know. Apple will allow yeah, for the. No, I don't know, but I, I. The way my understanding is, anything to do with money has to is not going to happen. Really? Is that is that why he couldn't? Mount Gox Live couldn't get his app in. Right. They're working on um, all the Bitcoin apps. My understanding is that all the Bitcoin apps are um, having to use uh, web-based apps. Because Apple Store won't yeah. let anything on there without, uh, you know, if it, if it involves any kind of money or currency or anything like that, it, it, they say no, unless it's going through Apple and it's 30% and all but that. But PayPal does. has an app. Yeah, Chase has an app. Yeah. Like, how do these banks, so what the if big like... big banks, they, who knows, they pay the right price or something. Because we can create, like, a mobile hub page in a way, so you're, you want to transfer money from Douala to Trade Hill, mm -hmm. you come to our... Um, our app, and you're not actually paying us in the app. It's more of a, du a Duala page that you're paying us through, and then it comes back to the app. It's all done instantly, of course, through the, you mm -hmm. know through our app. But and then it transfers to, to mm -hmm. Trados. So we're not actually taking money. I have to review the Apple's terms. Yeah, my they're, they're um, crazy. They are, and I, even if it is an app that calls web pages and things like that, I think they've been really strict on anything Bitcoin. That's why the the Bitcoin mobile apps they're having to do them web based. That's my understanding. You correct me if I'm wrong. Give them the feedback. Yeah, address. all the Bitcoin apps send don't a, actually an do email. anything. Yeah, if I'm wrong, send me an email. Put that up there. Yeah, feedback at onlyonetv.com and let us know. We'll, we'll uh, read your comments next time. But I'm pretty sure that that's the, the, the way it's always been with Apple. Because their terms but, and conditions say that you mm -hmm. can't use the, you know, iTunes to build a nuclear bomb, but yeah, not say much about Bitcoin yet. Well, yeah, they don't have to say. They can pretty much say it's completely up to them. They but, yeah, they, they can just, and they can change their mind, like they did with you know Google Voice. They had that was a famous thing. Really? Yeah, they changed their well, they changed their mind after the European yeah, Union was threatening all kinds of uh, legal things. But um, but yeah, they banned Google Voice. I was app. wondering why. I was in Europe and I had the Google Voice app, and I was so excited to be able to use it. And mm -hmm. It wasn't letting me making calls through the app. I had to actually get a call back, which mm -hmm. is pointless because then I would be paying the money for right. the anyways. That's the that's why they Wow, I learned something new exactly, today. Exactly, exactly. But then they um, they anyway there was a lot of uh, talk about Probably, the European yeah. Union legal stuff and they backed down a little bit because they were being threatened with uh, I don't know, um, whatever it is, fair trade and stuff. Google's like so, the government though. Yeah, well they're yeah, they're they're pretty much uh, they're enormous, so the big clash of the titans there. But from my understanding, anything Bitcoin related that's, I mean, the only thing that's been approved Bitcoin related is um, information, just like charts, numbers, you know, prices, things like that. But anything that involves any kind of trade, even if it's calling a web page, so far hasn't been approved to my knowledge. But there are these sophisticated web apps where you, it's just in the browser and they use the, this new, I don't know if it's HTML5 or something, these, the guys can correct me, but um, where it actually can store data locally, like almost like a super cookie, you know, huh. where it can actually access databases. So they can almost, they can really build an app sure. that's all web-based. So that's kind of what the, the take they've been doing with Apple. And then, uh, but Android usually is now the first yeah, one they, they did to develop on because you can do anything on Android. Gotta love Android. Yeah, yeah. So that that'll be slick. It would be. I think I could see envision it saying, you know, just putting the amount and go. Where do you want it? You know, yeah. from Trade Hill to Mount Gox, from Mount Gox to my bank account. Very whatever. simple, Boom. like a nice user interface. Where yeah. You just have to tap. It'll highlight. We're we're building a new site now, actually. So mm -hmm. um, that's one of the last announcements. Yeah. But it'll be a cool interface where. You literally come to the site, it's like totally Web 3.0. You yeah. choose on the left, exchanges or payment methods, you highlight it over, and then the same thing on the right. And mm -hmm. then in the middle, there's like a box where you enter in all your information and you hit transfer. Perfect, perfect. Very easy. If you make that mobile browser friendly, exactly. you pretty much you're well, done with go. that. You have an app, that's, that's all, pretty much all you need anyway. I mean, a lot of times I think that people make, I mean, apps are nice, but 
People go app crazy and no need for it. There's so many things that you could just do with a web browser. You have to be online anyway. You have to be on the internet anyway. Exactly. So why not just open up a browser and if you've got big buttons, I mean, pff, it's easy. Browser is much easier to update too. If something goes wrong, oh. you don't have to push it through the app store yeah. if it's a problem. Instantly. It's all yeah. done on your own servers and not through mm -hmm. Apple. And it's exactly. Exactly. You have total control over. You don't it want Apple else. to know a lot of your information too. Right, and you can also pull a feature off. You know, you can you can backward. You know, go backwards if there's a problem. Yeah, sure. You can change anything. So um, without having to go through anybody else, exactly. Yeah. What else? New payment methods you already mentioned, including Dwala, Liberty Reserve, Paxum. Record time of 11 seconds from payment on the hub page to payment into a Trade Hill account. Mm -hmm. Wow. What's it's okay pay? Really okay, okay pay is a new one. Okay pay just started accepting Bitcoin actually as a, a deposit method. They're mm -hmm. another Liberty Reserve uh, slash Paxum type of company, but they're, mm -hmm. they accept um, all different types of payment methods. So you can mm -hmm. actually use a credit card Fund your OKPay OK account with dollars and then use your OKPay OK dollar account to transfer that with BitInstant. But because, again, they're very fully integratable, you don't have to go to the OKPay OK website to do all that. You come to us, mm -hmm. um, you choose, you want OKPay, OK and it will show you the OKPay OK logo. You'll see, be able to use credit cards, um, a whole amount of different Russian um, um, e currencies, and a lot of the Southern American ones and, and all the other ones. Cause there's so many of them. The yeah. key is to bring them all together um, so you can push in and out and then you can choose however you want to do it. It's amazing. I know um, Paxim has one unique uh, feature. I don't know if, these, if you have to let me know if these others do, but, but I am familiar with Paxim in that they have um, a credit card. Like It's either a MasterCard or Visa mm -hmm. so that you can ha it's acts as a debit card. So can't I just take can. my, I can just do a bit instant withdrawal direct, right to Paxum and then just use my credit card? Can I take that credit card then to an ATM and get cash? Yeah, it's a, it's a full MasterCard. Oh. You can, it, um, there are fees associated with it, with, mm -hmm. with Paxum. Mm -hmm. Taking money out is a little bit more expensive than using it as a credit card, but you can use an ATM. Mm -hmm. Once we launch with Jarls, we already spoke with the Paxum and, and we're all good with them. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to take money instantly out of your Trade Hill account or Gox account um, through us. You'll have the money in Paxim instantly, and then you can walk around with your MasterCard and you know you buy whatever shop you with want. It, with or go to an ATM and get cash get for cash a little for bit it. more, and not, fee. and not having to wait. Are the fees cr expensive for the ATM withdrawing it's like 1%. cash? It's one percent, so it's not a lot, but it adds up. If you're talking about a hundred, two hundred dollars, one percent a lot. Yeah. Yeah, although people pay these crazy ATM fees uh, as yeah, it is. So it depends on how desperately they need the money, I suppose. Strip clubs are like ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know about that, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, <laughs> well, this is, on that note, um, I want to just take a moment and thank our sponsors. Um, first, Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox, obviously, uh, the number one uh, Bitcoin exchange. Yes, yeah, switch over there. Mt. Gox is M T G O X. For those of you who aren't familiar, who isn't familiar with Mt. Gox? Everyone knows Mt. But, Gox. Yeah, right. They they are the uh, the number one market leader and the oldest, uh, probably the oldest in existence uh, Bitcoin exchange. They are the online. Bitcoin exchange site where you can buy and sell Bitcoin for at least 16 currencies. There may be more now, mm -hmm. but at least 16 for sure. I remember that. Um, and uh, they're in Tokyo. We were talking about, we're going we're to be, we, we went, you know, I went there a month ago or how long has it been? Two months yeah. ago. Last and time we met, we had dinner yeah, like the night before your yeah. flight. When was that? Two months that ago? That was, yeah, a while ago, like two oh three months gosh, ago. So long ago. It's crazy. Time flies. Well, we're finally going to air that uh, video because it's, it's just so sweet. You're going to yeah. get the tour of the offices and all we that. We had a great so, time over there. Yeah. Yeah, stay tuned for that uh, in upcoming episodes. I'm going to go through and narrate and show you the whole stuff. But anyway, Mt. Gox is in, um, in Tokyo, and uh, they're the number one Bitcoin exchange site. They, uh, you know, obviously... Tradle's catching up, though. Buy and sell, are they? Yeah. Tradle's market share. When Tradle started accepting BitInstant, um, August 16th, remember the day, I have a chart. You can actually go to BitcoinCharts.com and see... Turtle's market share went from 8% to 17%. Wow, that's good. So because they took a big bit instant. instant. Because now they can get their money in faster. Well, now Mount Gox is going to take now a bit Gox instant. Has it so too, yeah. They might grab that market share back. We'll so see. Show them again, Mount Gox. It's mtgox.com. Be sure and check them out. And now they accept bit instant. So it's, it's all one, one big money uh, and one big happy family. business partner. <laughs> right, exactly. So we can just flow the money flows in every direction. So anyway, thanks, Mt. Gox, for uh, uh, be sure and email Mt. Gox and thank them for sponsoring the Bitcoin show because without them, we wouldn't be able to tell you about all this, this cool stuff. And 
The Thank You Economy. Um, the Thank You Economy is a book by New York Times bestselling author Gary Vaynerchuk, which you may know. He's uh, very famous from Wine TV. Fantastic he's a book. Yeah, serial entrepreneur. Yeah. He's a he's a brilliant, brilliant guy. Shockingly young for being so wise. Um, but um, I read his books, and his office is right over here, yeah. just a few blocks Anyone away. Anyone who wants to do any business in management or marketing has to it's, read this book. Yeah, it's like a Bible for a uh, new business and a new economy in you know this world of web 2.0, 3.0, whatever we're at. Um, it, it really explains how to use the, how to you know leverage these new technologies, um, the web, the social media, and all this stuff properly. Everybody knows how to, well, not everybody, but most people know how to create a Twitter and Facebook page and all that stuff. But they're doing it, when they're trying to market their business, they're doing it all wrong. They're, yeah. they, they get spammy and they, they really turn off their customers. But if you do it right, and Gary Vaynerchuk teaches you how in this book, The Thank You Economy, you can actually bring your, instead of selling stuff, you can build and create relationships, long-term relationships, and um, give people the customer service like your grandparents used to get from the corner store. I, mean, I have to attribute a lot of, a lot of it instance of that book because in the book he, he really goes over, he says to you in the book, in the first couple pages, take any talent that you have and even if you're scared, give it a shot, try it, make it a business, go for it, you have nothing to lose, especially yeah. in this economy when there are more investors than there are businesses to invest in. That's right. Yeah. Gotta well, go for it. This show, the Bitcoin show, is a perfect example of that because I don't have any talent whatsoever, but I, <laughs> we, we started out, we, we know that. do it anyway. Oh, thanks. Anyway, <laughs> but we do it anyway, you know, and, and if you look at the very, very early episodes where we had, like, no audio, <laughs> oh my gosh, it was really, really a mess. Uh, and the early, the lighting, the audio, I mean, anyway, it's getting better, but that's the thing. You just like Nike, just do it, just yeah. do it. Whatever it is, just do it. And you figure it out. Beautiful studio, yeah. Fake it till you make it, just fake it till you make fake it. Fake it till you make it. That's a great that's one, right. I didn't hear that one before. Oh yeah, I didn't create it, but I've fake heard it. Fake it till you make I it. I don't even know where I heard that, but yeah. That's like my mantra right there. That's it. You just <laughs> fake it till you make it, that's right, exactly. And you do, and it's, that's the thing. It's just, it's a positive affirmation. It's whatever you believe in and you focus on, yeah. well, that's a whole other show. But anyway, but it's, isn't, it, isn't it so true? But I think it's all. Sure. It's all part of this philosophy um, that Gary teaches in that book. So buy that book. Thank, what is it? Thankyoueconomybook.com. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. All right. So yeah, that's it. Thankyoueconomybook.com. <laughs> so uh, thanks uh, to Gary and the gang for uh, sponsoring the Bitcoin show too. Let them know we appreciate it. All right. So back to BitInstant. Um, so... All right, let me go back now. I'm still going through the uh, press release here of all the other new features. Um, we Okay, API, we got uh, Gox SH4. The fork that I was What's talking that? about before. That's the software that you can actually, command line software that you can download. Oh, that's the command. Oh, you, use you developed it. No, it's not. We didn't develop it. It's, um, it, it was um, developed for Gox. Oh. Um, it's, a, it's a trading software for Gox, but we kind of created a fork of it, oh. our own. Thus, um, it's called a fork. Exactly. And that, so with added capability of in integrating with BitInstant. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Perfect. And it's all automatically updated. You can download it straight from our site, too. So it's... Command it. line. So you can use it from any, from your laptop or wherever you are. Yeah, I mean, you have okay. to have some, some sort of knowledge of, of mm -hmm. running commands, but it's pretty simple. But the idea, I mean, is are, who's using that? Are they mostly developers who create their own app? and arbitragers and... So they develop their own software and they just use that? Yeah. To, a lot to of the more the geeky or nerdier mm -hmm. guys who don't want to visit the, the user interface. Um, it's not that pretty. Mm -hmm. So they, I well, like it. I love the this orange. This is pretty. Yeah. Compared to command line, but I mean, it's, it's <laughs> but command line's whatever easier. Boat. Also, well, yeah, if something you have as a command line, you kind of diagnose the problem a lot better. Easier, yeah. Um, What's the difference better. between using the API? Why would you use the API versus the uh, Gox SH fork? So the, for, the fork is standalone software. Mm -hmm. um, the API is for integration to your own software. So if you have, mm -hmm. there are a lot of, you can download on the forums and, and just, uh, you have Google it, you can download a bunch of um, Bitcoin trading bots that you can mm -hmm. trade between the exchanges. You can transfer your money around and, and do like that. So our API does that automatically. Um, we have customers who literally just use our API, um, have arbitrage bots. And mm -hmm. as soon as, and this is a lot of, most of our, most of our arbitrage customers who use our, our arbitrage do this. So they download, use our API into their bots. Mm -hmm. And as soon as their bots run out of money in one exchange, it automatically initiates a bit instant transfer of money oh, wow. from where it's needed. Gox to Tradle or Tradle to Gox or Dwala, wherever it needs to be. Wow. It's all automated for them. So I'm seeing like transfers coming through at two, three in the morning when I know this guy's sleeping, mm -hmm. but I, he's doing it. He's are you on, are you connected with Camp BX and, and all of those yet? Or? So, 
we're speaking to all the exchanges, and mm-hmm. uh, most of them are actually approaching us about this. Mm-hmm. We have we have some risk by keeping a lot of money with them, so mm-hmm. I'm very reluctant to work with with Camp BX, especially what happened with Bitcoin Seven. Mm-hmm. Um, they just disappeared mm-hmm. out of nowhere, and they took everyone's money. So I, mm-hmm. I don't want that to happen to me. Camp BX, I don't really know much about yet. They're still very small. They haven't really grown that much, mm-hmm. um, so I'm not really working with them. Interest angles is is growing nicely, and they're very trustworthy. Crypto exchange is very new. Mm-hmm. Um, but we work out a deal with them to minimize the risk and, and so the, a lot of other exchanges. Mm-hmm. We're very excited to see them grow. The more exchanges, the better it is for the economy. Yeah. The key is liquidity. Right. Liquidity, just like cash, Bitcoin should be just as easy. Mm-hmm. Once we get over that obstacle of liquidity, the Bitcoin economy can really grow and we can start getting merchants to start using Bitcoin and we can really take it mainstream and start to tackle the legal obstacles at that point. But liquidity right. needs to be taken care of. Right, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so and that's what you're doing. You're filling a, a, We're trying to. a need here for sure. And then what else? Oh, you have a 10, 10 out of 10 5 star rating from, what is that, 1010? 10, 10, or is that October 10? 10? 10 out of 10. Oh, 10 out of 10 5 star rating from resellerratings.com. Reseller ratings is, is uh, integrated with Google. So mm-hmm. if um, any, you know, B&H, any major retailer, Amazon, Dell.com, all have ratings on reseller ratings. Um, mm-hmm. Most customers go to reseller ratings before buying from a store to see. I'm plugging reseller ratings right here. Mm-hmm. Um, they go to their, they go to the store, the website before they buy from a store to see the ratings. Uh-huh. Um, we have only five star reviews. Every, if you go to reseller ratings, type in BitInsta, you'll see only good things to say. All of our customers love us. Our because our team is in all different time zones. We've pretty much. Uh, 21, 22 hour customer service. We only sleep two hours a night. <laughs> Which, we, it's your money. You're so busy writing reviews. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> you can't. Kidding. If you try just to take kidding. it, they know. <laughs> yeah. They'll know. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you, um, we try to treat $35 like $3,500 because mm-hmm. it's your money. And, yeah. and it's, I, know, I know what it is to lose money to get scammed. So yeah. I don't want it happening to anyone else. Yeah. Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go there. So true. So true. <laughs> So, all right, um, what is this about depositing cash at Chase, Citibank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, ING? So, you're, so this is new, right? This is huge. When did this just happen? This started, um, <laughs> we've been in negotiations with this company for, for, for a while now, um, working on all the, the details and kinks. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you know, Exchange of Bitcoins, before they closed down, had an account closed down. Um, they were shut down. Um, Trade had ING account was shut down. Citibank account was shut down. Gox has his Chase account, but who knows how long it, that'll stay up. Most banks don't want to work with, with Bitcoin-related or any commodity slash auction-related sites. Right. They, they, they claim it's okay. They'll get it in writing. It's all fine. But then later, close they, your accounts. later they close your accounts. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. Even if you're, you're, you're licensed MSB with the IRS, so in your money service business, you're mm-hmm. legally allowed to transfer, do all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Getting a bank to open up an account for an MSB is really, really difficult. Oh. Once they do open the account, you're subject to very high rates. So there's mm-hmm. this company that we're working with. Um, that has accounts, many accounts, in all of these banks, the top mm-hmm. 10 banks and a lot of smaller credit unions, are, is already doing business with a lot of the online dating sites and adult uh, porn sites and mm-hmm. gambling sites. Mm-hmm. So you can actually go um, to livedating.com, want to set, you set up an account, you can actually go deposit cash. Mm-hmm. Um, and the beauty of this whole thing is that even when you, with, with uh, Mount Gox, when you want to deposit cash, he has to manually log into his Chase account, see when you did it, and then... Um, approve it. So yeah. it could take as little as 12 hours, even sometimes 10 hours. Um, it takes, I've heard people say as much as three, four days for him to approve it, mm-hmm. especially the larger ones. Mm-hmm. Um, that's because the banks don't really have a standard of um, integrating with you. So right. there's no way of knowing when someone deposits cash. Like, how do you know that? Yeah. So this company already has it set up with the banks. So hmm. um, we're paying them a lot of money to fully integrate with us. So as soon as you deposit the cash, We'll automatically get a notification. Our software will get the notification and deposit and transfer the money to your exchange account. So it's automated. It's automated. Completely automated. So it's really instantaneous. As soon as you deposit the cash, mm-hmm. um, like I said before, it's pulled every twenty minutes on the hour. Okay. So if you deposit it at um, five thirty or five forty, it'll at six o'clock it'll get transferred. Wow, that's cool. I'm gonna test this. Yeah, I'm go for it. Depo- I mean, I'm gonna deposit. We've been testing. There, there's a lot of ways you can you know defraud it and go around it, but because mm-hmm. there, it the prints the deposits for you beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, we know we know whose cash is associated with who. 
Mm-hmm. So there's no way to kind of like fake it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, this is what you were explaining before. Okay, I got you. Yeah. You go so, to the bank and you want to deposit money in your account, yeah, right? Yeah. How do you do that? With Chase now, you can just go to the machine and deposit the, a check. But most mm-hmm. banks don't do that yet. And, and people still conventionally, they go to the teller, fill out yeah. a deposit slip, or even use the ATM machines. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, you fill out how much you want in your account number and everything. And, and you deposit money. Everyone yeah. knows how to do that. We um, generate the deposits slip for you. So you print it on, the, you print it on your own computer? From the website? Yeah, exactly. You just have it, it there, it generates it, shows up right there, you hit print. Um, actually and there's the some print identifying information exactly. on the deposit slip that already it has tells exactly them. how much you want to deposit, uh-huh. um, all that information, all the bank account details. So you literally mm-hmm. walk up to the bank, you don't have to tell the bank any information, you just hand them the deposit slip, it has the account number of our accounts on the slip, hand her the cash or the check or whatever you want to do in, in one of 16 currencies. and. How is it that the bank doesn't ask you? Like I've had, I've actually done that before. Um, I mean, not that, but I've I've deposited money into someone's account yeah. before, and they'll sometimes ask you, "What's the name on the account?" And it's all on the deposit slip already. It's all there. Everything is there. Okay. All the information on the account, um, the account number, whose Everything account they it possibly is. Want to ask. It, it even has a little disclaimer on the bottom, just telling the bank teller exactly where this money is going to, because the company that we're working with is pub- is a publicly mm-hmm. traded company oh, on the yeah. stock exchange. It's hmm. owned by a big holding company, okay. so they have. Federally and state licensed, and they're all. And they were already in this business. They've been in this business for time, years. Yeah, and they, so okay, so they're not going. There's no yeah, surprises gonna, for the banks. They already that's know great. what they're getting into. Mm-hmm. We we had actually asked one of the banks if, if it's okay that we do this, and they said, "Yeah, sure, as long as mm-hmm. it's going through these guys." Mm. And yeah, wow. And their fees are really, really, really low. The fees that we worked out with them, mm-hmm. because we're doing so much volume already, mm-hmm. um, the fees are very low, much wow. lower than than whatever it would cost. So that's it'll cool. cost you one to two percent to do this. Well, Chase, Citibank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, ING, that pretty much covers everybody. Yeah, There's we'll have, a, we'll have a, um, a widget on the site. Mm-hmm. Type in your zip code or your address. Find and the nearest. You can find the nearest bank branch. Yeah. And you choose the one you want, wow. and then it prints up the deposit. Is that bank. only within the U.S.? Right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, Canada, um, Europe, and, and Australia are in the works. Okay. Wow. I'm excited for Australia, because I think the Australian market's growing. With Bitcoin. Yeah, There's I think so too. It's real popular there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they but it. they keep getting. Don't they get their accounts shut down there too? Yeah, <laughs> These yeah, other, everyone's getting their accounts yeah, shut down. The banks they they claim it's okay and then they shut it down. So all right now instant okay instant USD withdrawals. Yeah. Is this now? No, right now it's only That's deposits. Oh okay. Withdrawals is the next step. It's coming soon. Is this like through the same um, partnership or whatever that is that how that's going to work like. Like, will you be able to, you'll actually be able to go to one of these banks and withdraw cash? So, no, you can't do that yet. Um, what we want to do eventually is be able to, you'll be able to choose your account number mm-hmm. um, that you want your money into. And because we have accounts at all these banks, account to account transfer within Chase is, you know, free and instant. Mm-hmm. Um, ING Direct, person to person pay is also free and instant. It takes a couple of, sec- uh, a couple of minutes, um, at most a couple hours. Right. Because we have all these accounts to that. But with that type of withdrawal, is still a month or two away. Mm-hmm. Um, instant withdrawals out of the exchanges into the payment processors that we already have now is going to be um, within a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Cool. As long as I get my money. Yeah. Okay. We need investors. I've been right meeting me. with them and uh, been meeting with with dozens, and we have a couple already signed on and ready to rock and roll. But I'm finding it harder to to deal with inv- I have retail sites so mm-hmm. I've I've had to you know do, do seed funding and before and mm-hmm. much easier when when you know you say I'm selling cameras great we know what cameras are we know what the business is it's like yeah. not only am I selling bit instant I'm selling bitcoin yeah so I'm selling a whole new industry and you have I'm to spending educate mo- them first it's a hassle cuz I'm spending most of the meeting by the time they figure out they they basically a little understand yeah, what it is yeah. it's like everyone's like how do you want to go uh. home already yeah, and then they like to, yeah. I'll like, I understand that, but meanwhile, like, if you wanted to open a camera site, like, there's a billion camera sites. Yeah, you have and to have an edge. It, it wouldn't even, yeah, it wouldn't even fly, probably. But but uh, this is something that's very unique. Nobody else is doing it, and it's probably a, a, a amazing potential. Yeah. So if our audience are already Bitcoin savvy, so uh, if, you, if you've got some money, if you're We already have the numbers minor, to show it. Yeah. I don't know if I should say the number out loud, but we did a we did a pretty nice volume um, our first three months. Yeah. Actually, I could say it out because we posted in the forum. We did roughly... Uh, half a million dollars in, in, in gross revenue before uh, cost. In gross revenue in, in three in three months. That was wow, that's great. It's pretty good. Okay, so investors, send, send us just send an email. Call me. I'll forward it. <laughs> yeah, I'll forward it on to you for a cut. No, no, I'm just kidding. Take it. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no, I won't take it. But cut. yeah, but like you said, on. there needs to be like if you were over a camera site, there would need to be an edge. You need to have something different. What? How are you different? Yeah. 
So we, you know, obviously we're different with Bitcoin and with Bit Instant, but there's still you need to find like the risky investor who's willing to take the jump, be mm-hmm. the first guy. Yeah. So we're working with um, some investors who already have started payment processing type companies before, and and um, one of them, I can't say his name yet, but he started a an online game currency um, site. So with all with all a bunch of video games you can have currencies back and forth he already started that mm-hmm. um, so he's kind of familiar with, with how this all works are there do you have any competition is anybody else trying to do this not that I know of yeah I hadn't heard of it I, I don't really know much I guess even if there there was we have a really long leg up on them already yeah so yeah we have the partnerships with the exchanges and with the payment processors cool but we're, so. we're really open to 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 anyone else who has ideas um, we're looking for designers, programmers, uh, marketing people. We're, you know, our mm-hmm. company is all over the world right now. Um, mm-hmm. We pay very well, <laughs> so you know, give us give us a holler. And you're ba- like your headquarters we're based is in here, New York, yeah, right here. Okay, in cool. In New York. All right, cool. New York so, and Wales. Wales. Yeah. Wales. Oh. I oh. didn't mention him, but the brainchild of of uh, Ben Instant was the brainchild, and his idea of uh, my partner and co-founder, uh, Gareth Nelson, who's uh, based in, in Wales. He's mm-hmm. actually not Welsh. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was <laughs> totally his idea. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he told me, Charlie, I want to get a faster way to get money into Malgox. Mm-hmm. And I said, that's a great idea. Let's do it. You know, I'll fund you. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, let's grow this. Let's make this a multi-billion dollar business. Let's, let's yeah. really make it big. Yeah. And, um, and he's been just so devoted. And he, I think he's like the top third. He's a god in Python programming and, and on Odesk, which is a, one of the biggest freelance um, programming sites to get programmers. He's like in the top 30 list. Wow. Cool. So thanks for staying yeah. with me, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do you see? You know, what I, my idea, what I'd like to see is uh, ease of use. Mm-hmm. This is a Bitcoin, I mean, besides security, obviously it needs security. We always need security. But um, ease of use so that um, yeah, that's why I was saying like a, like a smartphone app where I can just literally go boom, boom, Mt. Gox, 1,000, Trade Hill, whatever. Like super, super Fisher Price simple. Mm. Um, and obviously instantaneous. And then as far as withdrawing funds... Um, It'll be the same thing. Yeah, same thing. It and maybe even, say we have the box. Maybe you could even get a, a somehow, you know, whatever. You, you're the deal, the deal maker, sure, real or dealer. Me. But if you figure it out... Have a um, you know a bit instant branded Mastercard Visa that's really pack or whatever. No, but you're so right. That, so and that you have goal. your own branded thing. This is how you get it in. Go to any bank, <laughs> put in the money. Yeah. Um, this is how you get it out. Here's your Mastercard Visa. Just go to any ATM. So it requires a lot of regulations and a lot of you know a lot of laws and things like mm. that. But eventually, you're basically doing it though. Yeah, I mean we're doing it indirectly. Everything yeah. we're doing is indirectly to avoid all like the legal obstacles yeah. until until I finish all my my licensing. Yeah. But. Yeah, I mean, first what we'll do is I'll create BitInstant vouchers that you can walk in. You can buy an Amazon gift card. You can buy a BitInstant gift card. Mm-hmm. You come to BitInstant, you can use that gift card to for Dwala, for Liberty Reserve, for Paxum, for anywhere. You can use that that voucher um, mm-hmm. for credits on Trade Hill, Mt. Cox, any of the exchanges. Mm-hmm. Um, so that way you can get your money in and out instantly mm-hmm. using that voucher. And you can go to a store and buy one. That's cool. And people can start selling the BitInstant vouchers to themselves. So it kind of becomes its own... So to the end user, like me, the, the viewpoint of the end user, at least in my case, is um, I don't really care how uh, complex it is and how indirectly it happens. Yeah. I don't, like, it's like making a phone call to China. I don't really care but you don't know. how it gets there. I don't even know, right? I don't, I don't know and I don't, really don't care. What I care about is how easy it is to just pick and up the phone and dial the number. Too, don't oh, and the price, of course. So the price and the ease and the simplicity. So that's why... And the security, yeah, of and course. And security, all those things, of course. <laughs> yeah, that goes without saying the price and the security for sure. But after the price and the security, then it's just the ease of use. I don't want anything complicated. I want it to be so simple that literally I get a bit instant Visa or Bid Instant Mastercard or something. You know what I mean? Something that's just so so easy. I, yeah. I install the app. You know, like uh, have you ever seen that Square where you can accept? Yeah, sure. Card? I have one. Simple like that. For consulting. That's one of the most the, the one of the. Uh, I mean, you know, their fees are what their fees are, but yeah. um, but They're the ridiculous. fact is, it's yeah, but it is easy, and people <laughs> like easy. People really really like. So imagine easy. a system where you can literally load your Mastercard. But by loading your MasterCard, you're not just loading your MasterCard, you're also loading money into your BitInstant account. So you can use that money to put it anywhere you want. Yeah. And yeah. then at the same time, use that to buy cash. So you buy Bitcoins, you want to cash out of Bitcoins, you don't have to wait at all. You, once you have your money in Gox or in Trade Hill, you can easily walk up to a store and use that cash. 
Mm-hmm. So then at that point, Bitcoin actually becomes finally a currency that's more ease yeah. of use. Are you going to be involved? Going for? Are you thinking of uh, getting involved at, um, at the retail level as far as point of sale? Or is that something that's just beyond? What? <laughs> the idea is out there. The mm-hmm. idea is out there to become a merchant processor. The idea is to build a point of sale. The beauty of it is that we already have the software built already. For mer- I can open up a merchant solution in a couple of days. Mm-hmm. But there are merchant solutions. Yeah. There are, I, know, I know someone is working on a really, really nice point of sale system. I've been helping him out on that a little bit. Um, so the ideas are there and, and mm-hmm. you know, we may do it down the road. But we're, we're taking it day by day. We're seeing what, what, mm-hmm. what works and what there's a need for. Yeah, and you're right. There are a lot of people developing merchant solutions because you know yeah. that's. I think I think need. when we do do a merchant solution, will be will be the best one because besides for for being able to offer the cheapest fees, is that all the Bitcoin merchant solutions that you go to today, they're geared towards people who have Bitcoins already. So to use mm-hmm. BitPay, you need Bitcoins. Mm-hmm. With us, or if we integrate with BitPay, um, you'll be able to actually use dollars, and instantly be converted into Bitcoins, and then paid for on the site, so you can pay cash with someone who has, um, <laughs> who's accepting Bitcoins. You know, that's really an interesting point because <laughs> people talk about this, and they talk about the volatility of the value of Bitcoin. Yeah, it goes up and down. But you know what, it's really irrelevant. Like, if you get, if you get paid in dollars and you immediately buy Bitcoin with it, it doesn't matter that the, vo- exactly. the value We're of the dollars is going the down. Bitcoin skeleton. But, yeah, but it's, it's interesting that Bitcoin could be used this way. So if I have dollars and I want to buy something from a merchant that needs dollars, I can actually use Bitcoin as the, the currency in between for other reasons, for its convenience, for the fact that it's electronic, it's no irreversible. For merchants. For, you're missing the biggest point. Merchant fees. How much yeah. do credit cards yeah. charge you? 3.5%, 4%? Yeah. They charge back something like thirty-five billion that? dollars a year. It's ridiculous. In fees. Yeah, exactly. If they if the they fees. were used the Bitcoin system as that workaround, mm-hmm. be saving so. Much. I run the numbers yeah. myself with my camera business. I'd be saving millions of dollars every year on transactions. It's like the difference between a courier service and email. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. You're, you're paying for the same results. And so, in that case, the the value of the Bitcoin, the, the you know, as a, as a you know, compared to the U.S. dollar, doesn't even matter. It as long as difference. you do it instantly, as exactly. long as you're doing the trade instantly, it could be a dollar, two dollars, two cents, doesn't matter. As long as you're buying it and selling it, buying it and selling it. The merchant it. can choose how they want their money. The merchant yeah. can say, I want bitcoins, I want dollars, mm-hmm. I want Tuala, I want this, I want that. It doesn't make a difference for us yeah. because we have everything. Yeah. And I think that's why Visa, Mastercard, and the banks are scared of this because mm-hmm. Bitcoin. Bypasses the banks. Bypasses, Bypasses everyone. Everybody. So they're really scared of it. And in the end, the recipient can be getting U.S. dollars in cash, and the, the merchant, because they got to place their order that week or for whatever their supplies. And the customer can actually, they've got cash because they just got paid. So they're buying with cash. The merchant's receiving cash, but the in between is Bitcoin. And so Bit Instant mm. could work both ends of that. Think of it as like you enter your credit card number in, then you have. For example, you want to buy something on, on one of my camera sites, you have to, um, it goes through us, and then it goes through authorized.net, which is a merchant processor, and then it goes through an in-between bank, and then it finally gets to my bank account. So it takes mm-hmm. 24 hours for things to settle. And then right. it's a whole hassle. So it goes through so many people, and there's so many fees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bitcoin, you're bypassing that whole process. You're having fees. the money instantly. Yeah. As soon as the customer pays you, you have the Bitcoins. You can even cash it out. On the spot, you don't have to there's wait. little there's little tiny fees with Bit Instant and the exchange sites, but they're minuscule compared, oh, compared to compared to what it is. It's, yeah, we're talking about one percent over four or five percent. Yeah, five yeah, five times the amount. Yeah, it's crazy. That's the beauty of it. You know what it is? It's I need to take this 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 show and show this to investors because mm-hmm. they don't understand things like that, and mm-hmm. a lot of them are too scared because they say, once you have all that ready to go, and once there's a market for it, then call us. Yeah, yeah. they don't want to go with you in the beginning. I say, look, you're getting shares in a company at nothing what it's going to be worth. I guarantee yeah. you it's going to be worth five times the amount in 10 years, in, in a year from now or two years from now. Exactly. They're exactly. not risky enough. <laughs> it's their fault. So look, yeah, losing out. I know. And no then, risk, and then no reward. If they Google it, they're going to, they're going to learn about the, you know, the, the, hi, oh, yeah, the oh. hijacks and the, and the hacks and things like that. Where, uh, but that's where these types of systems are the security that's needed. These yeah. new, uh, and we're going to be talking about in upcoming episodes, we're going to be talking about uh, version 0.5 of the Bitcoin client that came out yeah, um, yesterday, I think. Yeah, hubbub about that. Yeah, there's a lot of hubbub about that. And so we'll be talking about that and the new GUI interface and all kinds of stuff. But, um, but yeah, this, finally, these security and infrastructure and systems like Vincent are, are coming of age. Okay, well, we knew Bitcoinica? they're coming. Quantica is gorgeous. Have you seen the interface? It's, it's like no. trading on a real exchange. 
mm. um, real brokerage house stocks. It's he really did a really nice job, you wow. know, graphic wise and, and and a really nice wise too. And I know I I can't say that I know a couple of other exchanges and mm -hmm. and uh, working on some new uh, features as well, which are going to really revolutionize. So I'm, I think this, the Bitcoin is it's coming. Is, is going is really going to be huge. It's going to be amazing. Coming. Yeah, it's very we, exciting. The um, Wired magazine came out the, um, last night actually. See if you can get a close-up of this. The um, uh, this is the December issue. It's d dated December, but it actually came Sneak out preview. yesterday. I don't know if you can see that, but um, that's the cover. It's got Jeff Bezos of Amazon on the cover. But right up here it says Bitcoin, <laughs> and uh, it's really it's cool. Exciting. Yeah, it's it's a big article, and uh, the rise and fall of Bitcoin, the story of the virtual currency you can actually spend if it doesn't get stolen first, and that's exactly what we were talking about. Oh. Um, what did they talk about in the article? Ben Wallace, is, is, who wrote this, actually hung out with us. He was here at the conference. He's, he's, he was at our meetups and everything, hanging out with us. Like, nice uh, yeah, he's a really, really cool guy. And uh, the objectivity of the article? Does it? It's good. I think it's very objective. I mean. He, he just tells it exactly, he tells the whole story of it, how it's made, how they're mined, how they're spent, what yeah, you can do Time with it. Time Magazine came it's, out with an article yesterday and it's just stupid. Oh, they got yeah. their facts wrong, they, they said it, Bitcoin got hacked and really Mt. Gox got hacked. And they uh, just, I'm surprised because Time is supposed to be, and I, and I hope someone from Time is watching this I'm show. I'm not surprised. Hear, oh yeah, I've done, really I've done episodes where I just, I've just you, <laughs> you guys really know pathetic. I've done Your episodes where I just, uh, come on. I call it, you know, lazy journalism. Come on, and, uh, you're supposed to misleading. have a standard of, yeah. you know, of being objective and you yeah. really just completely The fail. ones that really get me PO'd are the ones where they interview me. And they still write it all wrong. And they screw your words they, Yeah, they totally twist my quotes and stuff. And I, I actually did a whole episode dedicated to like five or six of these uh, that were just just hack jobs. But no, Ben did a really, really good job. Well, oh, here's the best part. There's a, there's me. There's yeah. a, I don't know if you can see that. It's great <laughs> Get a close up. But anyway, that's... What uh, are you eating in that one? That's, I'm, this is, uh, they call it... <laughs> Don't the, say it if it's not a sponsor. Don't no, the caption, no, no, yeah, there's a the, uh The caption is Bitcoin's <laughs> chief prostitute Proselyt, proselytizer, Pro however you say that. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Prosthetic. No. Bruce Wagner at one of the, uh, New York City's restaurants that accepts the currency. This is a Hudson Eatery, which is actually where we had dinner at the uh, several times at the Bitcoin conference. They're the, I think, world's second restaurant good to food. accept Bitcoin. Yeah, really good food. They're awesome. Mezze They're really Grill cool. has great falafel too. Yeah, Me Mezze Grill. We love them too. Yeah, of course. So uh, anyway, no, Ben did a great job. I think that he points out it's just absolutely true what he says. He points out that um, security is the big issue. That's what I've been saying. I mean, security and liquidity yeah. um, are two of the most important concerns. And what, are, what, are, what other concerns? There's the legal aspect of, of Bitcoin, and there's still there's no precedence mm -hmm. yet, but I think as more exchanges get licensed and yeah. become regulated, um, I think... Exactly. As long as, these, as long as you guys are following the regulations and, and you know... Uh, and we are... Yeah. They, you know, they come to us and they think Silk Road, um, Bitcoin, <laughs> drugs. Yeah. Literally, in, first thing investors asked me, I, I had this question yesterday, and he literally said this word for it. He said, yeah, but the majority of Bitcoin is being used to buy drugs on Silk Road. The majority. Road. Like, really? Oh like, my come God. on, now. you just lost all my respect. <laughs> you don't know any statistics at all. Come on. Yeah, oh my gosh. You got to read more than one. So, so much of the media is so biased. It's crazy. Silk Road, Silk Road. They, they went through this whole period about I tried Silk Road. buying from Silk Road. But I did. I had a guy call me the other day. Um, he's like, because I, I put my number on the actual site, and I said... Oh, Silk Road? No, on my site. Oh, no, on Silk Road. No, I've never been there. No, I tried buying from it, and it's much easier walking down the block and buying from your local <sighs> dealers. See? See? You took my words out of it. But this guy called me, and he goes, from my site, bitcoinme.com. Okay, it's like yeah, this, this little, site. like, uh, yeah, it's a little explanation of what's Bitcoin, too. Like, a like little. A Fisher really, Price. I've used that to explain mm -hmm. it to people yeah, before. Yeah, it's simple, right? And so... He, but my phone number is right there because I really want to help people learn. And if they if they if it helps them to dial a phone number and talk to me, I'll talk to them for two minutes, no problem. Sure. And uh, so anyway, make a new friend. I can always have more. So anyway, the guy calls me and he says like he wants to know how to do it. Da 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 da. And I you know I said you know something about wiring it and all that. And he and he's really concerned about it being anonymous. And I'm like, well, let me let me make make it clear. It's not anonymous. It's pseudo anonymous. It's not completely anonymous. And I don't know what your needs are, but you know, if you wire money, that's not anonymous, just so you know. It's not anonymous. And you know, I went into all that, all the intricacies, and he finally, we were like beating around the bush, and finally he said, well, let me just tell you, it's no big deal. I just want to buy something on Silk Road. And I'm like, 
Okay, that is a big deal. <laughs> Sorry, that's a big deal. I have a feeling that Silk Road is so probably Bitcoin a target. So Bitcoin is anonymous as long as you stay legal because there's no reason for anyone to, to find out. For example, if you were to buy drugs on Silk Road and, and, and they wanted to find out, your, they, they see your Bitcoin address in the blockchain. You can see mm -hmm. where the Bitcoins went from and where they went to. Yeah. So they can always subpoena an exchange and say whose Bitcoin address does this belong to. Yeah. So it's anonymous. Um, it's sort of, when it's, it comes to adult sites and if you want to you know, buy porn and you don't want yeah. your wife to find out, Bitcoin's fantastic. For that. So in fact, yeah. that's the market that I'm going to be getting into. It's anonymous from your wife, probably. It's not anonymous from the CIA. No, definitely. we don't want it to be. No, I mean, that's the thing. So it's as anonymous as using the internet. Us using the internet, I mean, is anonymous, but not really. As long because as you can't legal wrong. Yeah, People assume yeah, that yeah. as Bitcoiners are a bunch of illegal you know, geeks sitting in a basement somewhere, <laughs> which I totally am. After the <laughs> but, exactly. you know, doing illegal things, but it's really not. We really want to, you know, service the world and Bitcoin is a fantastic thing. We just have to, like someone said on the forums, it's, uh, it's the answer my friend is blown in the wind. Yeah. Just like the song. <laughs> gotta we'll, grab we'll it. We'll get there. We'll get there. Just gotta grab it. So um, you're doing the right things. Let's do this again. For sure. And we'll talk about all the new developments as all these things we're talking about yeah, come to fruition. Because they already, I mean, all these things are really exciting that are out now, but there's a whole lot more around the corner right now. The features are going to be, it's going to yeah. be phenomenal. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Hope to make, oh. um, hope Bitcoin becomes big. Yeah. And it already will. It yeah. already is. Oh, it already is. Are you kidding? Worth it's almost like, $100 million well, now. Right? It's on the cover of Wired. It's on Forbes Fortune. It's everywhere. I mean, you can't, I mean, you can't hide from it. No cryptocurrency has ever been where Bitcoin is already. And we have, now let's get to the main question that we've been kind of beating around the bush since we've been here. Who is Satoshi? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's on our next episode. Stay tuned. <laughs> we, are actually, totally, we are really totally, totally out of time. But thank you for having me. Really thank appreciate you. It. Thank you so much. Bit Instant. Check it out. Bit Instant. Dot as com. in instantaneous. Bitinstant.com. Charlie, thanks Fantastic. so much. Thank you, Bruce. All right. See you guys next time, tomorrow, whatever. Cheers. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's my birthday on Thanksgiving, actually. Hey, happy birthday. Cool. We don't have to announce that, though.